Welcome to Speed Scene Live TV, the only show dedicated to the sportsman racer. Brought to you by Curry Rear Ends, m Tires, and TheFoat.com. With your hosts, Diana Mike, Bruce Barker, and Scott Lucky Hudson. And welcome to the show. Yes, indeed, you've locked on to Speed Scene Live. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight. I'm Bruce Barker. Diana Might is out on assignment tonight. That's code for out on assignment. But in studio is Lucky Hudson. Hey, I'm here on the show. I'm ready to go. I'm wearing my UMTR, the Unlimited Manual Transmission Racers Association shirt. Yeah. They're going to be at National Trails Raceway this weekend, and they say... If you ain't got a clutch, you ain't got much. Yeah, well, it's a fine-looking shirt and a fine organization as well. All right, what's coming up tonight, you may be asking, and even if you're not, how to get sponsored tips, the all-important how to get sponsored tips, alongside the world's wildest wheel-standing golf cart. we got tons of video. This is crazy stuff, man. Speaking of stuff, we got stuff from Speed Scene Live, the Speed Scene Live Nationals at Great Bend, Kansas. That's what you're looking at right now, Bruce. That's some fine-looking video and some fine-looking video. Bryant Layton's going to be on the show as well. He's got the PRP Seats and Bells Off-Road Report, and that's coming up. Also, Hot Rod Bob Beck is going to be focusing on... uh, Oh, I almost let the cat out of the bag. We'll keep the tension. We'll keep all that, uh, you know, suspense just suspended. I feel like I'm deja vuing myself. Hey, hey, I, I think you're having a stroke, really. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, we want to thank uh, Brett Wagner from Pastime for coming on the show last week. And remember, go to speedscenelive.com. Speed or go to ha, go to speedtv.com. I think now I'm having the stroke. <laughs> go to speedtv.com and fill out their feedback. Here's a racer that came to the Speed Scene Live Nationals at Great Bend, Kansas. Good looking Dodge Dart, really fast, and the car broke. Brand oh. new motor, took a dump. So they said, We came here to race, and race we're going to do. And they slapped a Speed Scene <laughs> Life sticker on their <laughs> SUV and wrote, Oops. And uh, they were there to have some fun. Great attitude, great spirit, and really kind of sort of symbolize everything I like about Great Ben. Wonderful people at a wonderful track. How about that? I wonder, do we get to see the times on this? Uh, well, I don't know. I don't think, <laughs> I don't, I think they got edited out because, uh, you know, it takes a while to get to the end of the track, unfortunately. Yeah, that Nova looks a little bit faster, even though he might not be pushing hard. Yeah, now here's a great looking car that was there. But let's talk to one of the racers at the track. It's a good-looking S10 you got here. Thanks. I understand that uh, you had a, a, somebody on your door here, your friend, your mentor, that passed yeah. away that was kind of I responsible it, for you. I said the guy that built it. And what was his name? Gavin Newforth. And uh, what was it about Gavin that was so special? I don't know. He's like my big brother. Well, good luck. You have a good pass. Thank you. I got to ask you more, but you got to go. That's right. He does. You got to go. Strap up and go make a pass. And uh, that S10 was doing good all weekend. Now, here's a car that did very well, and we're going to actually talk to this driver. Notice the Speed Scene Live sticker on the scoop right below the 507. Indeed, I do. Yeah, he had a very successful weekend out at the Speed Scene Live Nationals. Now, uh, this NMCA West rolls into Pomona this August, and there's still plenty of racer tech cards available. Go to nmcadigital.com. You can sign up. Come by and see us in the Curry Rear Ends booth in the vendor area. Pick up your Speed Scene Live stickers, your Curry catalog, maybe a Curry sticker. And next week, we're going to have Charlie Harmon right here live in studio talking about the event, talking about the series, talking about all the cool stuff. And i got to tell you, as a racer that went to their Bakersfield event, Bruce, I'm very impressed with the entire association. Nice. So Charlie's going to be in studio next week. Next week, uh, the 31st, he's going to be right here. So if you got a question about NMCA West and you want to call in, you can talk to him or you can send us a, a message on the FOAT on a crew update or uh, maybe even a question about some of the series back east because, you know, NMCA is really big back east. Yeah, well, there you have it. Hey, you know, speaking of racing, which we tend to do around here, the next ANRA, the next ANRA, race is going to be at Bakersfield, the Auto Club Famoso Bakersfield track, August 24th through the 26th. So uh, come out and race, man. Diana Mite's going to be there. I think you're going to be there too, Lucky. Absolutely. Planning on it. Looking forward to it. Really a great place. Now, I mentioned earlier we're going to get a chance to meet the driver of that dragster. Let's meet a couple of the racers that were there. Wayne, what's your name? Wayne Henning. Wayne, good luck. Thank you. 
What's this gentleman's name right here? Tom. Tom, you got a last name? Williams. Tom Williams. Hey, thanks for running the Speed Scene Life sticker. Hope it brings you some luck. <laughs> well, I hope so too. <laughs> it's all right. Oh, it's right. What's your name? Norval Ritter. Norval, good luck. I hope you do well. Thank you. Thanks for coming out oh, to Speed Scene you. Live Nationals. We appreciate you having it. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah. How long have you had? Um, this is the first year. Yeah. yeah. yeah Excuse me a second. What's your name? Craig Amarine. Craig? Yes. Craig, good luck. Thanks for coming out to the Speed Scene Live Nationals. Thank you very much. It's been fun watching your car all day. Thank you. Yeah, this car was great to watch. A brand new Camaro body style running low sevens. And, of course, the dragsters, these are the fast cars. And, uh, you know, uh, the thing about Tom that was uh, really impressive is he won the Gambler Friday, and then he came back and he won the Quick 16 class on Saturday, which not only did he get the Gambler money and the win money for Saturday, he got a $1,000 bonus check for doubling up. So nice. I guess that Speed Scene Life sticker did bring him a little bit of luck after I guess, all. I guess. There's something about that car that looks strong and race ready, man. I don't know what it is. You know, it's a, you can point to the design like the single strut that holds up the wing at the tail or something. I don't know. It's a very clean looking car. Well, he is a hitter in that area and he races a lot of races and he's well known. Of course, the uh, gentleman that was racing that Camaro is well known for being a good racer too. And obviously the other two racers did very well well in order to make it to the semifinals so uh, uh, ended up a, a great day of racing and of course it was fun watching the fast cars you know the fast cars have gotten so fast nowadays to see a car like this Camaro that really doesn't look too radical and to see it running low sevens <laughs> it, it's it's really impressive to see these guys making that kind of horsepower and it really makes it fun for the spectators to get an opportunity to see these guys just blazing down the track yeah well and you know late model Camaros too and I you know we're talking the full mix here but yeah a car like that that's you know within the last couple of years of manufacture and uh, I, hats off to people who can manage to because you know cars more and more are sort of an integral beast and it's very difficult to take a new car apart and uh, have any of the systems even still working. Now, you know, you get a car like this, and it's basically a shell, uh, you know, around completely different mechanicals. But still, man, there are a lot of moving parts in a, in a new car as opposed to an old car. Absolutely. Now, uh, speaking of moving parts, you know, everybody likes golf carts, but some people are a little more wild with golf carts than others. Bruce, let's talk to one of the wildest wheel-standing golf cart guy around. Daryl, welcome to Speed Scene Live. Hi, guys. How you doing? We're doing good. You know, uh, not often that we actually have a golf cart guy on the show, but you've kind of taken that golf cart off to a wild, wild direction. <laughs> well, yeah, I always wanted a wheel-stander, so that was the next best thing that I could come up with. Now, why? I, I know you're a drag racer and you're, you're racing alter. Why? Why? How did you get involved in this journey? Well, I didn't make much money uh, doing any bracket racing, so I thought that <laughs> this would be a way to go. I'd get paid to go to the track, get to watch races, and, and be a part of the show. <laughs> well, I think Bruce has an in camera shot of you driving. <laughs> Uh, you know, I know. What do you say about this? It's an yeah. in-car shot, and when you see the wheels go up, you just kind of go, "This is, this is an experience unlike most others." I think. <laughs> Takes a little bit to drive, but uh, you know that video is actually of my wife. I was trying to get her to practice, and uh, she we couldn't get a husband and wife team going, and uh, so that's actually her. <laughs> Wow, wow, that's pretty good. Now, uh, I, yeah. uh, oh, 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 I thought you were hitting the wall right there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Bruce, I didn't know he had that kind of video. Yes. Oh, look at this. Now, I, I notice on a lot of times you, you're a showman. When you go down at night, you've got bottle rockets shooting off the back, and you do all kinds of things to entertain the crowd, and people really seem to eat it up. Yeah, they do, and uh, that, that's what I like about it. I had great uh, fan response. Um, spectators. Uh, it's really cool. I, I love doing it. Um, hey, so Daryl, let's get into mechanicals a little bit. What, what's under the uh, hood? I hate to say hood in, in this case, but what, what drives these things? Well, this was the first one I built, and I used a 340 uh, Yamaha snowmobile engine. So you got way more horsepower than you'd be talking for a regular golf cart, right? 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, a regular golf cart's about nine horse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> now, now, what's the deal with all the sparks? Is there some kind of a skid plate on the back? Yeah, I actually uh, <laughs> got uh, titanium skid plates to, to get the sparks, although a lot of tracks got the rubber on the track. So, as you can see in, in some of the videos, you see me pull to the center of the track to, to try to get out of the groove. and. Uh, so you don't mess it up for the out. racers. Nice, nice. Now, do, yeah. you, do you have any sponsors, any companies helping you out? Uh, PPG helped me out a little bit with paint and supplies. Um, other than that, our Classic Carts uh, golf cart uh, business supplies money to, to get this going and to keep it going. Now, you've got an event coming up soon. Tell us about that. Yeah, it's the, it's the Rock and Race at Dragway 42. They booked me in to do uh, to make two passes on Friday night and two passes on Saturday. Um, it's a nostalgia race. Um, of course, the second pass will be with the fireworks and uh, a couple other things. Give away just yet. Um, wait till the show. Nice, <laughs> nice. Now, so you're kind of like uh, when I think when I look at your video, I'm thinking Hemi under glass and all the classic uh, wheel standers of, of days gone by, and you're just sort of condi- t- continuing that tradition. Well, of course, you know Jack Ermentara and Toby own Dragway 42, and and it's my home track and has been for the last 35 years, and and of course I've always was wowed by the wheel standers and. Uh, <laughs> So that's where I got a lot of my ideas. Like I said, I always wanted one, and and, uh, and this is what I got, what I came up with. Uh, somebody told me, you either need a fast wheel standard or something unique. So I went for the unique side. <laughs> there you go. Now, you t- the earlier video was of your wife driving. How'd that all work out? Uh, it worked out pretty good. She just has some issues with the heat and uh, putting on a helmet. So uh, And I didn't push the issue. I felt, you know, I wanted her to be comfortable doing it. And it may sure. turn out, uh, I haven't given up hope yet. <laughs> See what happens when the weather cools down? Yeah. Oh, yep. look at that. Look at those. I mean, those are pretty big. Those are some big-ass bottle rockets. Yeah, there's some big fireworks <laughs> on the slightly disturbed vehicle here. This is a... <laughs> wow. Yeah, sparks, bottle rockets, uh I mean, you're packing a lot into a small platform there. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then, then what I added here, like I say, I don't want to give away. I, I was packing some more in, the, in today, and I'm thinking, boy, if I ever got to work on this thing, it's going to be a chore. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, how can people get a hold of you if they want to book you? Look at this video. This is incredible, man. Those bottle rockets are way up there. That is amazing. It looks like a cell phone, too, taking this thing at night. It's What a show. Yeah, I mean, you're not just a wheel standard. You're also a fireworks show. <laughs> <laughs> so, Daryl, have you ever? Well, have you ever gone down the track? I'm wondering. You know, and, and this would be a question, obviously, that applies to a lot of drag racers. You know, like Crazy Connie, who do some wheel stands as well. <laughs> some, a lot. Um, have you ever thought about the issue of if one rear wheel is driving harder than the other, or any of that stuff? You know, you're you're off into the boonies with your front wheels in the air. What, what do you <laughs> do? You just not worry about that and hope everything comes out all right. Yep, yep, that's pretty much it. The thoughts entered my mind many a time. It's actually when I first got the cart going, it was actually built for back in 2005, Dragway 42 had a golf cart race. Of course, me being a drag racer, I wanted a performance cart, so um, I put it together, went up on Thursday and, and raced the cart and won um, <laughs> that event and the golf cart race. Well, Saturday, I knew they were going to have a wheelie contest and uh, with the cars, and so between Thursday and Saturday, I built a set of wheelie bars, grabbed the weight off my weight bench, and then and uh, strapped <laughs> into the wheelie bars and <laughs> and uh, ended up winning a wheelie contest. And the uh, world was never the same after that. <laughs> yeah, and then it's like, okay, how can I steer this thing? And uh, worked out steering brakes on it that I can steer. And and uh, funny how steering had, was the second yeah. question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, but, uh, I. I was going to ask, Daryl, have you ever tipped it over? Uh, no, that's what I was getting to. A friend of mine was trying it, and he ended up uh, coming down, of course, with the wheel stand. You know, it's a big no-no to come down with the front wheels turned. And he came down with front wheels turned, flipped the cart. He kind of got scraped up a little bit. So that was like, hey, you know, we might want to put a roll bar on this. So I did a roll bar. And I left another friend the next year driving in a golf cart race at 42, and he went through the traps at 46 mile an hour, and brakes locked up. He rolled it twice, and oh. kind of 
had some issues, so it's like that's why the funny car cage is on there. So hopefully after thank my friends for, for doing the testing for me, hopefully I'm protected now. <laughs> yeah, that so. those are good friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> they didn't know they were gonna be your test pilot. It just worked no. out that way. <laughs> Man, that is something. So what kind of transmission, is the snowmobile-type transmission working as well? That's sort of that squeeze belt variable rate, whatever they call those things? Yeah, it's actually the golf cart transmission. And, uh, oh, okay, and all right. Yeah. Hey, uh, I got to ask, because it looked like I saw you uh, purging the nitrous. Uh, I know. <laughs> sure did. Yeah, yeah, that's on there for a little bit special effect. <laughs> yeah, I think right at the start of this video here, I don't know, maybe we can see this thing right as it starts. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Okay, right as soon as the vehicle comes to a stop, here we go. Commentators in the background. Really puts on an outstanding show, and to cap things off, slightly disturbed. Uh, a nitrous-powered... Uh, look at that. On things you've seen in <laughs> well, oh, gee. well you, even, you even coordinated it with the PA announcer. That's great. <laughs> Man, you know, uh, I I think uh, I really like your style, Daryl. You know, you, your Thank you. your your showmanship. You're doing things just because it would be fun and cool to do. And mm -hmm. you know, I like that. I like that. I like when people go to the track and say, "I'm here to have a good time. Watch out." <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so oh, yeah, that's what it is. I've loved drag racing. I've always always drag raced, never done anything else. And uh, and uh, the, you know the people with the drag drag strip, well, you know, um, they're good people, and uh, and I enjoy it uh, uh, immensely uh, being at the track. We're taking another look at Heidi as she does the wheel stand. She looks pretty calm and collected on this thing. I don't know, Daryl. Yeah, I might have to work on it some more. Hey, so yeah. you you drive more than just golf carts, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've got the the twenty three T Alder that uh, that runs about nine sixties. It's a really a, a, one of the nicest cars that I've had. Just a driver. If the driver could cut a light, you know how that goes. <laughs> so that's where you get your your racing thrill. Is you get to take. Are you with the uh, Southern Slingshots? Yeah, I'm with a group called the Southern Slingshots. Uh, they're based out of pretty much the East Coast here. They got about fifty members. Um, some some are in the works of, of putting a car together, and and uh, others are running their cars. Now, now, the Alter doesn't really do big wheelies, though, huh? Uh, no, no. No, I'm uh, trying, to, trying to convince my wife of a blower or supercharger setup, and, and yeah, that's been kind of tough to do, so oh, I, don't, uh, I don't push that issue either. Well, I guess at least you aren't trying to convince her to put it on the golf cart. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> now, what kind of rear end do you have in that golf cart? It's a, it's a golf cart rear end. Be because uh, I have a vintage 1976 Taylor Dunn that's sporting a Curry 9-inch Ford rear end in the back. What? <laughs> and uh, it, that 9-inch, even though it's been in there since 1976, is in perfect condition. <laughs> that is amazing. Even I didn't know that. I've known this guy for lo these many decades. I've got that. I've got that nine inch hidden. Now, Daryl, uh, tell us again how people can get a hold of you if they want to book you. Because obviously, you're putting on a great show. How can they get a hold of you? Can uh, yeah, get on our, our Classic Carts website and uh, they can find the information. They can send an email there to me off the off the Classic Carts website. And uh, what is that website again? Classy Carts. Oh, that's it. Is it, uh, uh, is it C or K? You know, there's a lot of customizers uh, across this great country of ours. Yeah, Just yeah I'm, old, I'm old school. It's, it's, it's spelled with a C. Okay. Had and, to make sure. And that's a dot .com? Yeah. Yes. Well, Daryl, thanks for calling in. Uh, look forward to seeing more footage. And uh, hopefully, uh, hey, whoever's filming this stuff's doing a good job. So get some good footage of the big surprise you've got coming up. And where's your next event? Uh, it's going to be this this coming weekend, uh, the the twenty seventh and twenty eighth, twenty ninth at Dragway Forty Two. Their uh, their annual rock rock and race uh, event. Nice, thanks, Daryl. Great talking to you. Thank you, guys. Take All care. Right. See you let's, next time, Bruce. Let's take a commercial break, and then we're going to come back with Hot Rod Bob because Bob's going to tell us about the classic Willis. Chris Demke, driver of the Peen Ride Top Alcohol Dragster, and I want to say hi to Lucky and Diana Mike, and let them know that when I'm not winning races, I'm watching Speed Scene Live. 
this is Heather. Hi, this is Denise. And we're here with Layton Racing. Off-Road Racing with Bryant Layton. Tune in every week to Speed Scene Live TV to find out what's going on in the world of off-road racing. Coming up next, we have Bryant Layton on Speed Scene Live with the Off-Road Report. For over half a century, Curry rear-end components have been twisting out the torque and taking the punishment. And the new Curry lineup is stronger than ever. Some of the world's most capable, hardest-working vehicles depend on Curry gears, which is why you can too. Street cars, hot rods and resto rods, drag cars, rock-crawling four-wheel drive vehicles, whatever you're piloting, Curry expertise and rock-solid design means the parts will do their job so you can do yours. Check out Curry's custom rear ends, featuring a full line of upgrades, components, and installations options. The Curry Crate Rear Ends lineup offers ultra-strong construction on third members and carrier assemblies. And other underside parts, like correct link steering systems, keep your four-wheeler pointed where you want it. Add in a wide variety of solid, purpose-built suspension and brake components, and you've got one tough, ready-to-go machine. Grab a hold of a Curry Rear End. Talk to the experts at 714-367-2679 or view the complete line online at CurryEnterprises.com. Welcome back to Speed Scene Live TV with your hosts, Diana Mike, Bruce Barker, Scott Lucky Hudson, The Off-Road Report with Bryant Layton, and The Great American Auto Scene with Bob Beck. Welcome back to the show, Speed Scene Live. I'm Lucky. Bruce is over there. Diana Mike is out somewhere. I don't know where she is, but we miss her dearly. We're going to tell you a little bit about a race that's coming up, up for a... Uh, 10-5 racing, $10,000 last man standing, July 27th through the 29th. You did say $10,000. $10,000 free entry. How about that? $10,000 free entry race, and that's going to be at Woodburn Drag Strip. they got a big bracket race going on, and they've inserted this into the, uh, the festivities. And uh, they've already got 21 cars pre-registered for this race. And they're doing a lot of neat special things. Uh, last time I heard, uh, Fig Speed had donated a bunch of food and stuff for like a big racer, uh, you know, get-together, barbecue type thing. But this is racers getting together. They said they wanted to put on a race. Ten guys put together $10,000. They threw it in the purse, said last winner, you know, last guy standing gets the whole purse, and we're not even going to charge you to race. How so about that? 21 cars, $10,000. That's sweet. It looks like you can uh, pre-register. I've got a, uh, a website here, Union Yes Racing at yahoo.com that's an email address by the way but at least you get you started there's also phone numbers and stuff but anyway yeah yeah there's all that stuff too but let's bring bob back on and then after bob we're going to do some how to get sponsored tips but first hot rod bob beck with the great american auto scene and bob what do you call him do you call him willies or willis well, you know, the correct pronunciation is just that you said, Willis. But what? most people don't even call it that. They say Willies, and uh, it's pretty much accepted as it's a Willies. But it's actually Willis. I did so not know that. Bob, all these years, man, I, I've, I've been, you know, I've been going, what you talking about, Willies? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, but that's, you know, that is true. And it was Willis, and I don't know where they came up with the Willies part, but, I, you know, the Willies sounds better. Yeah, well, that kind of story you know, just gives yeah. me the Willies. Well, you know, Bob, I used, to, I used to call them Willies, and then I was corrected by some racers in Tennessee as we were passing a mason jar around. And <laughs> I figure that's about as, as authentic as you can get. So now I call him Willis. Well, here I thought, I thought it was just a local pronunciation. I thought it was one of those regional things, you know, like often and often. Yep. But I guess yep. not. Yeah, or, and if it comes from Tennessee, it could be anything. Well, yeah, I mean, every state in this country has got their own way of doing things, and uh, and God bless us for being that. Hey, we're seeing some of these great Willises. i I got to use this new yeah, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they are out there, and I'll tell you what, it is one of the phenomenons of American automobile history, because it was not a very high production car. It was produced as a compact car. Now, although people look at them and go, that's a pretty big car, not for the day. That was only a two-seater. It was very short. It had nice proportions, 
but it was a small car. It was powered by a flathead four-cylinder engine with all of 65 horsepower, and it got exceptionally great fuel mileage back in the day, but no one really cared. Oh, isn't I'm that a shame? Man. Yeah, I mean, you know, who cared about fuel mileage at 10 cents or 15 cents a gallon? <laughs> it just wasn't the case. But the problem was, is this little car, although it came out originally in 1937, the shark nose version, and you, you see the pickup truck a moment ago about that. That is the sh- what they call the shark nose. Now, the cab back is the same as the 41 to 42 that we see mostly in drag racing and hot-rodded and kit cars and all sorts of things. In 41, the model was actually called an Americar. Huh. And this was kind of a patriotic thing they did. They sold 7,000 units wow. in 1941, or it- actually as a 42 model, before the forty, as the before the war ceased civilian production. Right before that, they'd only sold twenty two thousand units in forty one. So not a very high production vehicle, but those that were around were enamored by hot rodders because they were lightweight. The frames made a Model A look strong, and uh, huh. they were not a very stout vehicle. It was simply lightweight, and this was the only car that Willis did. And it was the Willys or the Willis Overland Motor Company originally. Then it changed to the Willis Overland Motors. And uh, they tried the aging Willis 77, which was kind of an old model, very square. The 33 was a real popular car among gasser drivers, too. And again, that is a small car. Well, Joseph Frazier joined the company in 1938. He decided that a modern-looking and cheap compact car was the answer for the struggling Willis. So the Model 37, 38, and 39 gradually evolved into the more Ford-like appearing car. And uh, you see it right here. I mean, this is an exciting, it was a great styling. The styling was phenomenal. It only sat two people. It wasn't popular. So it was, it was what, uh, what some of our other manufacturers called a business coupe. Well, yeah, and that was just one of the models within a line. This was it. That's all she wrote. Now, there were three different versions of this Willis. There was a Woody. It was a two-door Woody wagon. You don't see very many of those, and I, and I don't know what the numbers were, but they were extremely low. And then occasionally you'll see a four-door. And uh, you see a lot of those at the drags. Uh, Chef Alia been running one here on the West Coast for decades. And it's it's all smoothed out, so it looks like a two-door sedan. That's one that purple one? Yeah, the purple one. That's the one. I didn't know that was a Willis. Yeah, that was a Willis, and it's a four-door. But he filled, filled in the rear door, so it looks like a two-door sedan. Now, one of the most popular ones out there you saw just a moment ago was the Stone Woods and Cook machine. And that was recreated uh, about mid early 80s to go nostalgia racing. But it was so popular among the hot rodders and kids at the time when it raced back in the 60s that Ravel came out with a model kit of that car. And it's, you know, it, it is immortalized forever in plastic. Yeah, but well, these are great cars. I know, and it is such a pretty body design. It's so weird to think yeah. the production numbers were low. And, of course, then Willis, during the war, you know, they were a huge uh, Jeep manufacturer. But Right. And, and Bob, I've mentioned to this uh, you this before that I, one of my first slot car memories, it was a Willis. Yeah. It was a bright yellow Willis. And, uh, man, I, I even when I was a little kid, I said, that's a cool shape. Yeah, I did. I did one of those, made it into a wheel stander because I like doing wheel stands at the uh, slot car tracks. <laughs> so I, I made mine into a wheel stander. But yeah, I had one of those too. And uh, they are exciting cars. They're good styling. They're still popular today. There's fiberglass reproductions available everywhere. There used to be a complete Willis kit available. It used a very strong perimeter frame, and you could buy it a few years ago. The pickup truck, you see very few of those, but there's a, there's a number of them in drag racing, and most of them found their way to drag racing. You see very few stock ones like this pickup that we see. It, it's People just did not leave them stock. American hot rod ingenuity at its best. Take a lightweight car, stuff a big engine, it can go fast, and it doesn't take that much. So they became real popular. Now, you see the mile-high ones. Those are the ones that are still embedded in our minds as to what a gasser is supposed to look like, and a Willys comes to mind. They've got them high in the air, parallel leaf springs in the front, 
it was only in the 80s that they started bringing them low down to earth in the front, and that was for stability. Technology on engines became so great, the cars were going faster and faster, and with a smile-high attitude, they start collecting air and getting a little squirrely at the high end, not necessarily spinning the rear tires, but just not getting any traction with the front. Yeah, in fact, what we can see of a, a huge wheel stand going on right now, it looks like, was it leaf spring suspension on the front? They had parallel leaf springs with an IV axle, which is standard uh, front suspension on those in the day. Sure. And the frame was very, very thin. It was a C-channel style frame, very narrow, very flimsy. The body became part of the structure to keep the frame from twisting. Hmm. So they were very, very lightweight, and that's what one of the attractions to drag racers were. They started out with a very lightweight car, very easy to get a big engine in it, and gassers guys just love these cars and they were plentiful and inexpensive they were cheap at the time now uh, you know uh, i'm looking at some of these today at 70 to 150 thousand dollars and you just saw one that was kind of interesting the side the side said uh, uh Rutka brothers uh, i think that is the uh, mr gasket guys hey brian doing good man I'm gonna put you on. well there's a whole bunch of these in the geezer gassers too and they are out yeah. there with the the front end up high and they said you know once you get past about 950 that high front end really gets a little scary yeah, it does, and that's why uh, Gary Ford was one of the first guys to bring one down to earth in the front and do a low-slung car with independent suspension and not the, the I-beam with twin springs because he wanted to keep the car stable at speed. Now, the picture you just saw a moment ago, I had to pull that one out because that's at my old home track, L.A. County Raceway, and this was taken at probably one of the nostalgia drag races they had for NDRA back in the uh, 80s, early 90s. Wow, great, great photos. And actually, when I was a kid, the first car that got me into drag racing was a Willis pickup truck that one of the mm-hmm. guys in the neighborhood had. Wow. And it was just the coolest thing. Bright blue, short bed, out of Anaheim, California. And I have no idea who he is. Uh, you know, I never even talked to him. I was just enamored with that car. Yep. Well, Willie stopped production during world, the beginning of World War II of the Americar or the Willys as we see it, or the Willis as we see it. They started building the Jeeps. They got the uh, agreement and the patent on the Jeep, the ability to produce them after the war, and that's what carried them after World War II. Now, they tried to get back in the car business again in 1952 with what they called a uh, Willis Aero. And it was kind of a neat little compact car. But didn't sell very well. It was rust prone. It was one of their first attempts at going unit body. Mm. And it was still powered by that same little four cylinder engine that also powered the Jeeps during World War II. Huh. Boy. But you could get the six cylinder version in that as well. And those engines were also shared with one of their sister companies, Kaiser Fraser, and you found those same engines in the Henry J. Oh, well, that explains it. I always thought a Willie's a Willis Arrow looked a lot like a Henry J, but I don't know if there was any actual sharing of parts. No, there were, other than the engine and transmissions, no. The, uh, the Henry J had a separate frame on body or body on frame, whereas the Willis Arrow was a unit body. And because of that, they didn't have the rust-proofing techniques they have today. In the northeast and east, the rust belt areas where salt was used during the wintertime, these cars disappeared rapidly. Yeah, yeah, they just couldn't hold together. Man, Bob, some great pictures this time around for the great American auto scene. Yep, I'm Bob Beck. You've just got gassed. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. We'll talk to you next week. All right, take care, guys. See now, ya. we're going to go to Brian Layton in a little bit, but, Bruce, you got a clip there of me showing off my rear end. My curry rear end oh, uh, underneath my uh, yeah. Nova. Yeah, the, I mean, like, uh, I'm going, ah, <laughs> Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> but uh, Curry has a line of fabricated rear ends called the F9. And uh, we recently, uh, well, I had to do a little welding on the car. I had a cross member that needed a little help. So put the car up on the rack and uh, pulled the wheels off and dropped the rear end down so we could pull those shocks off and get to that cross member. And I just thought this was just a great photo op to show off my rear. 
Yeah, <laughs> okay. I'm just going to roll with that, man. You know, that is a fine looking. I remember one. Uh, now, what's what's the typical or uh, the proper name for this particular style? Well, it's fa- fabricated rear end housing would be the, the typical name. Okay, because, you know, I, I, I think most of us envision a rear end as being much, much less bulletproof looking. And this thing is so solid, it might as well be on a, uh, I don't know, one of those big Euclid dump trucks they used to make that are 100 feet long. <laughs> well, this rear end will take a a lot of abuse. It'll pretty much throw anything that you got that you can throw at it. It'll take it all. Uh, it's about twice as strong as a regular nine-inch rear end housing, and it's made from scratch right here at Curry. And uh, you can order them from Curry. And there, there's all kinds of innovations that you can't see that are on the inside. It's gusseted. It's welded on the inside. The axle tubes are actually notched. So when we put the uh, uh, when we put the uh, axle tubes in and then weld it, it's really the strongest rear end housing out there. So we got to let people know that this is a great, great product. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of our sponsor tips because uh, people have been talking to me a lot on the Internet about wanting to get sponsored. And there's a lot of guys out there that say, oh, I don't want no sponsor. I don't want no sponsor. But, uh, hey, there's a lot of people out there that can use a sponsor. And if we can get more people to race more often, and face it, a lot of you racers out there, if a company, you don't have to get a whole lot of money. What if a company gave you $10,000 a year? Wouldn't yeah. that make a big difference? You know it. It would make a huge difference in your plan. Now, let me, uh, oh, nice graphics here, Bruce. Oh, awesome, nice. awesome. This is the most important thing right here. This is your hero card. And it, whether you got a sponsor or not, you should get some of these made. What this does is shows a picture of you, shows a picture of your card, has some info about the car, has some info about you, contact info. This is what I call my business card and my promo package. If you can get this to the person in charge of sponsorships, they don't want a book. They don't want to spend 20 minutes reading a book. They want to look, 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 and say, you know, I think I'm interested in this guy. Let's talk to him. So you definitely want to get these. Later, when you get your sponsors, you'll put your sponsors on there. You'll put your sponsors in the back. You'll put all that kind of stuff. You need this. The two most important words that you're going to use when you're talking to sponsors is impressions and return on investment. You know, when I talk to a sponsor, I don't even talk about being a racer. I talk about being a marketer. I talk about getting their logo and getting their name in front of a lot of people. I want to give them as many impressions or, you know, think of an impression as a pair of eyes. As many eyes on their logo as I can possibly get. Yeah. That's what I'm shooting for. And if the more you can do that, the more people will buy product from them, the more they'll get the return on their investment that they want to get. Now, Bruce, show a clip of the M&H tires that uh, we just put on Dianamite's car. We put a brand new set of tires on there. And one of the things I always love is when John and M&H writes on the tires before he sends them to you. Oh, that's great. He also mounts each tire on a rim, inflates it, measures the rollout, writes down the circumference. You get all the numbers. They're a matched pair because tires do vary a little bit. And this way, you never get a set of tires that fluctuate. They always match exactly. So uh, that's important. We're putting them front and back on the Dianamite Nova. New set of front runners, new set of back Wow, tires. I had no idea that they did that. You know, you, you, you think about buying tires, and uh, it's just kind of like done deal. No, you got to get them right. In a race car, you're going fast. You need to get this stuff. Now, i got to tell you about sponsoring. Think about away from the track. Don't think about just being at a racetrack, being in front of the racers. You want to get away from the track. Now, at the track, you want to shoot for some of the bigger events. You'd like to be able to say, hey, I was at Super Chevy show and there were 3,000 people in the stands. Or, you know, I was at this race and there was all these people. That's good. That's what they want to hear. That way they know that you're doing your job. But you can also think about car shows, different things that you can get your car to different num- different demographics, you know. And uh, other events, you know, they might give you more exposure, get the name out there. And a trick that I learned is when you're at a car show and you're just showing off the car, yeah, it's not as much fun as racing, but you usually don't break any parts. 
So it's a lot cheaper to do that. <laughs> Silver lining there. Now, I'm going to give you one more tip, and this I'm going to give uh, credit to uh, Les Morris. He says, when you go to a racetrack, take that hero card that I showed you earlier today, take it up to the tower with a big thing of cookies or papa joe used to make a pan of lasagna oh and, well his wife did uh. <laughs> and uh you know take it up to the tower and that way whenever you go down the track the announcer is going to be sure to mention you talk about your sponsors give you a little bit of air time on that that uh mic so less you get credit for that last tip and uh we're going to do more sponsor tips but i want you guys to think about it let it soak in there's a lot of stuff i can tell you and i hope you guys go out and you can get a company to pay you money now one of the guys that's been the most successful out in the off-road arena brian Layden with the prp seats and belts off-road report brian welcome to speed scene live Hey, guys. You know, great subject tonight, talking about sponsorships. And that's one thing in off-road it's really hard to come by, actually, and I was thinking about a couple different points. Um, for example, right now, the show is sponsored by PRP Seats. Now, PRP Seats started kind of in the off-road industry, but they wanted to branch out into the drag racing, into, you know, all types of auto sports industries. So when I approached PRP Seats about coming on the show, you know, of course I said, you're looking at a, something different. You're not just looking at the off-road people. You're looking at the drag racers and the drift guys that watch the show and everything like that. So thinking outside the box when you go to your sponsorship always helps a lot. You know, there's I've, I've even talked with different companies all the way up to, like, Ziploc, Ziploc bags. They want it. They're, you know, look at NASCAR. They got every – NASCAR is sponsored by everything. So what's drag racing and what's off-road missing? you got to find that little niche and really make it for yourself. That's right. It, Try to just be a little bit different. Don't think. I, I was talking to a guy on the internet. He posted a thing where he said, "Well, I don't know. Maybe I should just sit around and wait till somebody wants to pay me money to run their name on my door." Huh. And I said, yeah. "Yeah, that's a good business plan. Just sit around and wait till somebody gives you money. <laughs> That'll work out really good." Yeah, don't plan on. You're going to save a lot of money because you're not going to be racing them. Exactly. So. <laughs> now, what's going on with you, Brian? You know, it's a pretty slow weekend out here in off-road. Uh, you know, we had the Moore race last weekend, and that was pretty good, night race. Uh, we did actually, uh, we lost a racer this last weekend, and we don't know the cause yet. Um, he radioed his pit and said he was losing finger, or, uh, feelings in his fingers, and they found him about three and a half hours later, about six miles off the course, and he was an older gentleman, and I can't remember his name right now, but, you know, it looks like probably going to be a heart attack or something like that. So, and, sorry uh, to hear that. But you know what? There's a lot of talk about, you know, not only do we lose somebody, but, you know, and that's always bad. But you know what? He went out doing something he loved. He was in a single-seater buggy racing, and yeah. it wasn't a crash. They found his car. His actually car passed over a highway. So he didn't crash or anything like that. They think he'd actually ran out of fuel is what stopped it. So they're not sure if he passed out while driving and or got, you know, possibly had a heart attack, was trying to get back and was confused where he was at. They don't know all that yet, but you know what? It's going out doing something you love. You know, people always ask me all the time, why are you doing this stuff? You know, kids, why are you still racing cars? Why are you riding dirt bikes? I always say it real easy. I don't want to sit on a porch when I'm 75 years old and say, what if? Yeah. I want to go out there and live life. And that's, I think, why we all, you know, race the cars that we do and have a good time. And that's a way better way to die than sitting in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic on the 405 or sitting in one of those uncomfortable plastic chairs at the DMV. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, the more race was great, though. Of course, that was, you know, um, a very sad ending of the race, but the, the race went off great. And it's kind of a little mellow right now. We're getting ready for Vegas to Reno, though, coming up. And I think you guys probably remember last October I had Anna Cody on the show. Mm -hmm. We drove the Jeep for us last year. She, this woman has sold the Baja 1000 on a motorcycle, and she has sold Vegas to Reno on a motorcycle. And she's actually going to be calling into the show here in the next couple of weeks talking about her Vegas to Reno plans. You know, that's the big, the next big race in off-road, and it looks like I'm going to be going out to it. It's in the middle of August, and just have a real quick report tonight about a little bit about what's going on, a little bit about sponsorship, and a little bit about what's coming up. We're going to have Anna Cody coming up pretty soon. Robbie Gordon's going to come back on and talk about the speed trucks. Wow, and Robbie Gordon, that'll be that'll be really fun because he had that big news about the stadium racing. Exactly, the stadium racing. I got to go out to Glen Helen and you know check out the trucks and check out Robbie and everything like that. And it was crazy because you're I'm sitting there and there's 
everybody from off-road racers to NASCAR, Indy cars, you know, I mean, everybody you could think of was at Glen Helen for a private little test session on these cars. And these cars were getting beat up, but they just kept taking it. So Man. he's got a great video for us there like that. Unfortunately, Robbie could not be on the show. He is actually on a plane right now. And I, he said, can we call in and, you know, do it then? I said, no, we don't do that. We do it live. So we got to do the show live. We want Robbie on live. We're going to get him in here. I'm going to get him up on the phone and get, uh, you know, questions asked for Robbie when he comes out and talks to us for a little while here in the next couple of weeks. Nice. Sounds great. Thanks, Brian. Well, yeah, make sure to check out PRPSeats.com. Always support your sponsors and support you, and you guys have a great night. You too, Brian. Hey, we'll talk to you soon, man. All right, bye. All right, bye. Bruce, let's take a commercial break, and when we come back, I got a chance to meet a gentleman at the track that I, I just found it, it just fascinating, and we're going to let you meet him coming up next. Hi, this is Heather. Hi, this is Denise. And we're here with Layton Racing. Off-Road Racing with Bryant Layton. Tune in every week to Speed Scene Live TV to find out what's going on in the world of off-road racing. Coming up next, we have Brian Lane on Speed Scene Live with the Off-Road Report. m h Tires, makers of racing tires that give you the best bite for the buck. You've paid a lot for that horsepower. Make sure you use it all. m h Tires has the best compounds available for maximum traction. Go to mandhtires.com. That's m a n d h tires.com. Buy direct and save at the website and mention the speed scene for a 5% discount. That's right, mandhtires.com. Call them at 661 324 4773. MH Tires has tech guys ready to answer your questions or to recommend the best tire for you. Slicks or DOT. MH Tires has it all. MH were the first to create racing tires for muscle cars and also the first to create racing tires for sport compact cars. Legendary MH Tires. Shop online. Mention the speed scene and save 5%. Get the best racing tires, great personal service, and save 5%. Go to mandhtires.com or call them at 661-324-4773. mandhtires.com. that has served to defend our great country and our freedom. All of us here in the United States of America would like to offer our sincere appreciation for all that you do and all that you've done. To every family that has made a sacrifice for us, we thank you. Welcome back to Speed Scene Live TV with your hosts, Diana Mike. Bruce Barker, Scott Lucky Hudson, The Off-Road Report with Bryant Layton, and The Great American Auto Scene with Bob Beck. Oh, so much to learn, like Willis and Willies, and, uh, and uh, oh man, every time one of the segments begin again, I see some of just horrifying collisions and things going on. But welcome to the world of drag racing, which mostly that doesn't happen. But Most uh, of the time. That's most right. Of the time. I'm Bruce Barker, Diana Mites on assignment tonight, and there's Lucky Hudson. When I was at Great Bend, uh, one of the things that's intriguing about the Great Bend track in Kansas is it is the home of the very first NHRA national event that was done in the 50s. Wow. And it's still operating today. It's still ran by the same car club. And I ran into a guy hanging out at the Speed Scene Live National that actually attended that very first race, <laughs> that very first NHR race at Great Bend, Kansas, a gentleman by the name of uh, Larry Kuchel. And uh, let's let Larry tell us what happened now.
Hey, I'm talking to Larry right here. And Larry, you've got the distinction of, well, probably the only guy at the track here today that was actually at the very first national event right here in Great Bend back in the 50s. Yes, I was here in 1955 for the Saturday uh, qualifications and test and tune, whatever you called it back then. But as you know, the Sunday race was rained out. But uh, I, w I was here for uh, Saturday, and then Saturday night they had the cars downtown Main Street all lined up to where wow. you could uh, look at them. It was all on the front of the square. It was down the middle of the street and on both sides. And it was every car that uh, was racing was there. It, it was quite a sight to see. Wow, that's pretty cool, putting the cars down on the Main Street area. You know, that event was the biggest event in the world at the time, and people came from all over the country to be here and to be part of that event. Yes, it's amazing. You think back in 55, the transportation that, uh, that we had back then, you weren't driving uh, 70 or 80 mile an hour like oh. we do now, oh. and probably air conditioning wasn't too popular no. either. No. But those, uh, the racers had a lot of vision to drive from California uh, and the East Coast uh, to come to Great Bend, Kansas, to uh, to race their car that they had built themselves. Uh, I think that's an amazing part. They not only uh, uh, drove them, but they built them, and uh, and they they just did everything. They didn't run to the store and buy everything. If they needed something, either made it, went salvage yard and got a part. But they made it work. And there's a million stories of these guys coming across the country, and then their car breaks, and they go out to a junkyard and get an old motor or an engine block or something and make it work just so they can be at the event. Yes, I uh, read a story about Don Gartlitz, and he said uh, when you went to a town to race, he said you always got there early to find a good muffler shop because most of the frames were built out of exhaust tubing on the on the rail cars. That's true. <laughs> that would never pass tech nowadays, you know. But, hey, you had the opportunity to see all those cars. Was there one car that was your favorite out of all those? I think uh, my favorite would be the Bustle Bomb. It was a twin-engine car. It had, I believe it was an Oldsmobile in front and a Cadillac in back, and it was the first car to go 150 mile an hour for NHRA. Two motors, in, 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 two motors in one car. Two motors. The front one uh, was the only one that was running when they took off. The the back one was dead, but as soon as it moved just a few feet, why it came to life and it went like a rocket. Wow! And you were telling me that that car is in Don Gartlett's museum in Florida. Yeah, it's in Ocala, Florida. He has it down there. Uh, it was on display for a day or two. Uh, in 55 at the local Chevrolet Oldsmobile Cadillac dealership, and it drew, drew a lot of attention. Oh, I'll, I'll bet. Have you gone down to Florida to see it there? Uh, no, I haven't. I drove by it. Uh, it wasn't open. Everyone was in a hurry to get to Disneyland, and I, I couldn't, uh, couldn't talk him into stopping. But uh, I talked to Don about every year at the SEMA show at Las Vegas, and, and one of the first things he always asked me is, uh, how's the strip doing in Great Bend? Does he, does he really? Yes, huh? He still talks about Great wow. Bend. He wants to know uh, uh, what's going on with the track in Great Bend. You know, it's such a historic facility, and it's in great shape. We've been racing out here all weekend, and it's a great place to race. The people are nice. The facility's nice. I think it's one of those hidden gems that maybe a lot of people don't really know it exists. Oh, definitely. I just, uh, I'm really surprised that the city doesn't get behind it more. This is a wonderful attraction. It is the first race for N the national race for NHRA. There's a lot of history here. I was also here last year to the drag tour that came through, and talking to people that <clears throat> that came here, they said that they'd always heard about the track, never had opportunity to to come to a race, and they heard about this, and they just drove down to see what the track looked like, and to see the what the historical track was, just to be here and see it. You know, and I hear even to this day, there's people in town that say, oh, I've never been to that drag strip. I know it. That's, uh, that's terrible. This, uh, this is a wonderful facility. The location is excellent. You know, basically it's in the center of the United States. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm just amazed of uh, 
of the cars that are here today from Hayes and Ellenwood and the little towns around, of the quality of cars, and there's some fast equipment here today. There's a lot of interest out there. Well, I got to tell you, you know, you just don't seem that old to have been around so long to have been to that race. Were you in diapers at that event? Because uh, you seem like an awfully good interview. Well, that's a good compliment. I was a sophomore in high school, just starting uh, to uh, get my uh, feet on the ground with driving and being able to go places. And uh, I lived uh, 15 miles west of here, out in the country. And uh, Great Bend was always a place that my parents did their shopping and so forth. And we came to town a lot. And... and uh, I was always a car guy, still a car guy, and uh, it, it was just, uh, <clears throat> like I said, I could not believe it, of, of reading the magazines and then coming to Great Bend and seeing the people in person. And they were just as, they were just as common as, they, as the people are here today. You could talk to them, and, and uh, they, they would just tell you all about their car and so forth, and it, it was nice. Art Chrisman who made the first run down the strip. I, uh, I visit with him at the SEMA show when he's there, and he made the first pass. He had a nice car. Uh, it was kind of a copper-colored car. And, and some of them, was, racing was just kind of getting started for the NHRA, and, and some of them were maybe kind of what we call rat rods today. Right. They, uh, okay. they didn't call them that then, though. They just called them cars. Hot rods. Yeah, yeah, they were hot rods. and. And but they uh, they were safe and, and uh, they they weren't uh, concerned about necessarily painting a, a good paint job on them. They just wanted to make them run, you yeah. know. It was all and, about speed. Yeah, it was all about speed, and uh, but yeah, it was uh, this was the historic place for the for the beginning of the nationals. Well, I want to thank you for talking to me. It's an honor to have met you, and I, I just can't imagine what an impact a race like that would have had on a young kid just getting ready to drive, getting ready to get his license, and to be able to come out here and see all these, these well, they weren't even legends of drag racing yet because they hadn't become famous yet, but to see all these people that later on in life would become legends. Yes, to see what, uh, you know, like uh, Edelbrock and, and, uh, and people like that that, uh, you know, ended up, uh, with big companies making speed equipment, and they were driving their own cars, testing their own equipment, and so forth, and and uh, they just had a good business head on them, and, and uh, uh, ended up with with good corporations, good businesses, and that's what's keeping the sport going today is their products that was designed and tested by them back in the 40s and 50s. That's right. Well, thanks for talking to me. Yeah. I appreciate it. it. It's uh, great talking to you and. Uh, you know what? It's people like you that drag racing is all about. Well, thank you. Thank you. And I'm very honored to uh, be interviewed by you. I got to tell you, it was such a, a joy and a pleasure to meet and talk to that gentleman. Uh, so interesting. So fascinating. Such a great talker. Yeah. And such a wealth of knowledge. I could have interviewed that guy all day long. But Man. Uh, we only had just a little while, so yeah. I couldn't do it all day. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you hear that music? It's time for What's Going On, brought to you by Curry Racing Rear Ends, the folks who build the bulletproof rear end for your car. Or your golf cart. Yes, indeed. If you need it, you Daryl. Li you're living <laughs> proof that that can be bolted underneath that golf guy. I, I never would have right. dreamed of such a thing. And DragRaceResults.com. Go to DragRaceResults.com where you can find out everything you need to know about big bracket racing. And, uh, hey, we mentioned that Heads Up Race, $10,000 purse, winner take all, free entry, 10-5 tire. That's a Heads Up Race, July 27th through 29th at Woodburn Drag Strip. August 17th through the 19th, the Flowmaster NMCA West event featuring aerospace components NHRA Unleashed at Pomona. We'll have Charlie Harmon live in studio to talk about that next week. And August 24th through the 26th, the ANRA Summer Nationals at Famoso. Visit ANRA.com for more info and come on out. Try it out. It's a great place to race. And earlier in the show, I mentioned the UMTR will be at the National Trail Raceway. That's the fourth annual Stick Shift Summer Nationals, North and South UMTR members. What a great race that's going to be. And that will be 
National Trails Raceway. Can't believe it. So much good racing still to come. It's like no matter what direction my finger is pointing right now, no matter where, there's racing going on. I love it. All right, Lucky, we're out of time, man. Hey, we'll be back next week. Diana Might will be in the studio with us next week. Charlie Harmon will be in the studio. Uh, you know, you heard Brian Layton talk about Robbie Gordon's coming up real soon. And we've got a lot more stuff on the Speed Scene Live each and every week. And, hey, why not tell your friends about it? Indeed. I know I can't wait to do just that very thing. Coming up next, of course, the encore presentation of the show. It's where you get to watch anything you might have missed on tonight's episode, which is ending now for the first time. And, of course, uh, check out the archives page. All of our recent episodes are available there as well. And take along the audio podcast or the video podcast. Uh, more and more phones are capable of just stuffing that MP4 right in there, man, so you watch us on the plane or whatever. All right, we're good to go. We'll see you next week right here at Speed Scene Live. Speed Scene Live TV, the number one online motorsports TV show. Brought to you by Curry Racing Rear Ends, MH Tires, and TheFoe.com.